But, John, we're going to start off with a little breaking news here with you tonight. I want all of our Spaced Out Radio listeners, all of them, to book April 22nd to 24th. April 22nd to 24th. Last night, we decided that that will be our Spaced Out Radio party in Vegas. It is decided. Where, who, what, where, when, why? Well, we've got the when, we got the where, we got the why, but I want to see how many people are out there. We're going to start advertising it very, very soon for each and every one of you out there, and we're going to have a get-together in Las Vegas. We're going to bring Science Bob out. We're going to bring Nicole Sackage out. We're going to bring out a number of people who are going to come on in and make this a wonderful get-together of Spaced Out Radio listeners. We're going to advertise it on our website. Heck, my team doesn't even know about this yet. That's how new this is. And I'm telling you guys first, April 22nd, 24th, in Las Vegas, we'll tell you where. We're all going to gather around. What strip club? <laughs> God, there's a mute button for a reach at a time. No, I was reading a comment on the, on the list, man. That wasn't me, man. I know, I know. It was but beautiful. This is a great. Yes, no, is a great... It, will, it will not be anything to do with adult scenery around. It won't be at the, you know, I'm not going to name a few names that I may or may not have been to in the past. Bunny All right. right. No, never been there. Never <laughs> been there. Holly Madison's show in Vegas was great. Either way, <laughs> let's get this back on track after John had a real dirty mind there for a moment. But April 22nd and 24th, what we're going to do is we're going to gather all our Spaced Out Radio listeners. I want confirmation if you're coming or not. Because if you give me confirmation, I'm going to give you guys a swag bag of Spaced Out Radio gear. We'll have more details as we get closer but i think this is a good christmas present for all our spaced out radio listeners start saving up for it and make this happen all right john hudson you're coming into the conversation and of course we still have nicole sackage and science bob here for science bob and friends so let's get to it john i want to know your thoughts on the gillenbrand amendment passing the house mostly unchallenged well, I mean, I, I, I do think it's a little interesting that, you know, I don't know to me, there's just there, there's absolutely no aspect of this that isn't fascinating um, from the reactions people are having, the reaction people aren't having the 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 intentional reactions people are trying to portray. I mean, it, the, everything is just it's it's there's so much layers of funny involved in this that, that it's, it's terribly enjoyable. But um, but, you know, but I mean, it, it's it's very encouraging and, and it should be. It should be celebrated. I mean, it should be. It, it, we should all be. This is this is an achievement. This is something that you know everyone played some small role in helping to make happen. Right. This is a result of pressure. You know, someone like like Jillian doesn't like get the 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 motivation to get up and speak with the energy she does in if she doesn't have constituents that aren't telling her that that's how they feel right so i mean this this is this is a good thing this is a really really good thing i, I am a little bummed about the science advisory um stuff being pulled um but um but you know you figure you know something had to be given the fact that there was back end negotiations going on to a nitty gritty enough level that that specifically got removed as a concession shows that there was some pretty detailed back-end negotiations going on, which is a good thing. Because it shows that the military was actually involved and they were participating and they were negotiating. So I, I think I think from almost every angle you look at this, it's 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 all goodness. It really is. It's all goodness. John's flag waving. <laughs> He's gotta pass I'm, I'm, surpri- I'm surprised. He's gotta pass the Senate and be signed by the president. Yeah, it's it, no, it, it's still gotta it's still gotta run, it's still gotta run through the whole thing. But I'm I, I'm honestly I to me to me the almost the, the biggest victory was that it survived to this point in, in reconciliation that, that basically the language was preserved, right? The fact that that, that language that, was preserved. The, the sponsors now include 
a blonde female liberal Democrat from New York and Lindsey Graham from South Carolina. They're both sponsors on this bill and moderate mm -hmm. Roy Blunt and mm -hmm. uh, uh, Rubio is still in there. He's a sponsor of this. So it is really, truly bipartisan. Yep. Yep. And I, th and I, and I honestly, I really do. And I, 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 this isn't like, this isn't like facetious at all. I really do believe that, that some of them, I don't know if all of them, but some of them are really enjoying the fact that they can be honestly bipartisan about this. You can see it. Their posture changes. They, they relax a little bit, you know, like I, I, I think that they, I think that, uh, that more and more of them are going to glob onto this issue because they all miss having those occasional nonpartisan issues where they can actually work together. Right. It's a lot more fun when you work together. Yep. Wow. You said it right there, John, you know, I mean, I think for years, you know, people have been aware that ufology is this, strange cross-section of spirituality and politics and it really could unite the world <laughs> we might be seeing the beginnings well no i mean there's certainly so because i mean as we've talked about before there's so many people that, that go on this these there's all these story arcs that, that we all seem to follow depending on where where we start researching this and where we are and what how we follow and you know so many of us i mean there's many different story arcs but i mean just the perfect example is how many of us go from from you know um bits and bites and 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 you know in physics to consciousness and and near death and 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 orbs and stuff like that i mean like most of us would never even imagine we would be considering studying orbs in any kind of a serious way when we started this right like i mean or near death i mean come on it's like no it's like nighttime tv stuff right but there you are you know and it's like wow okay bummer thanks grant you know so i love it i love it well it is going to be interesting to see how this moves forward because I, i'm curious does anybody on the panel see the actions of Susan Goff or other people within the Pentagon, you know, trying to go public saying this is not a good amendment for the American public. No, no, all the backroom negotiations have been done and there'll have to be a serious monkey wrench for it to not go through the Senate and be signed by the president that, that, and I want to point out something. It never would have gotten here if Biden was against it. No way. Never. He's for it or it would not have gotten here. Well, There's no point. There's no point putting in the effort that they have. To, the, the effort they've had to put into at this point is so tremendous. You're not going to do that unless you don't have some sort of a, of a logical guarantee that it's going to work out. Too much of an investment. Well, we're going to see where this goes. And it's going to be an interesting few weeks here coming up until this gets passed. And then what gets set up right after that. I mean, I'm very interested in seeing what's going on. All right, John, let's see what else you have in your news category for us tonight here on the Unbiased UFO Report. Dr. Sonny White makes a real warp bubble. What's this all about? Well, you know, this I was excited to talk about, and then when I heard Bob was going to be on, I was like, "Oh, this is perfect." So I'd love to give Bob's feedback on this as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is actually so. First off, so Sunny, uh, uh, Sunny White, Doctor Sunny White, um, uh, physicist, um, came uh, from years and years of NASA. He ran the um, the essentially the advanced propulsion um, uh, lab that you know that that it was really kind of a. Um, uh, a forward thinking of uh, really fringy sort of um, uh, um, uh, e called Eagle Works. Um, but they looked into some pretty crazy stuff. And while he was at Eagle Works, he uh, invented what he believed was an inform, uh, an, uh, an inform, in, oh boy, my screen's up, informometer? No. Anyway, uh, basically a device that he believed could actually detect. Interferometer. Oh, interferometer, thank you. Um, it could detect actually a warp field. And uh, the, the woman he was working with, she actually wrote a paper that put some doubt on whether that's really what they had discovered. But my point is, is that he was, Sonny White was already working on this stuff a while ago. He was very, very um, curious about the Alcaberry uh, warp drive paper. He, you know, this is, he, he's the one that did, I mean, I have his, his warp field mechanics 
um, presentations on my laptop that I downloaded years ago. I mean, he, he was he was talking about this stuff for years. And so what happened was, was that in it, he, after leaving NASA, he has his own consulting company. They're doing a very specialized contract looking at specifically Casimir effect um, scenarios for for some sort of targeted research. And while doing this research, they bumbled into what they believe is a an actual, real, incredibly small, incredibly, you know, like minuscule, like, you know, you're basically inferring its, its existence through, through, through uh, you know, uh, exterior means, but they believe that they formed a, a small warp bubble. Now, not everyone agrees with this, but um, and uh, what I think I loved was it basically um, Sonny White goes into uh, goes into the interview and basically says, and, you know, well, I, I think this is amazing. I, I think it's only because of the work I've done in the past that I recognize what I saw, the behavior that I saw as something odd. If I hadn't had that previous work, I don't know if I would have noticed what I noticed. But with that said, I can't pursue this right now. Um, that's not what our work is, is focused on. Our work is focused on this other thing. So I need to stay focused on that. So if later on, you know, someone wants to give me money to focus on that, I would gladly look into it. And this is how I do it. But that's not what I'm focusing on right now. So, um, you know, it, it is peer reviewed. It is actually, you know, uh, out for everyone to kind of tear apart. Um, some people have come out against it. But um, but this is what we've been waiting for is, is someone to figure out a way to create a very simple very basic, very tabletop sort of, of of demonstration that people can start scaling from. So it's it, this is going to happen at some point, whether it's Sunny did it or or someone else does it later. It's it's coming. All right, your final topic for tonight: Spy One Radar, first time radar matches pilot report. Yeah, so so this is this is just basically you know. This is basically my pet hypothesis, and and so, uh, but you know, in light of the panel, I wanted to kind of throw it out there because I'd love to get your guys' feedback. So, you know, this whole question of of why now, I, I had to kind of, uh, honestly, I had to kind of force myself to elevate that to a, a concern of mine um, because it wasn't, and I, I did so because I like you, Dave, and, and you, you seem to really care about it. So I, I tried really hard to care about it, and um, and. Um, and essentially, the, the best thing I could come up with was is that if you have a scenario where for years people in the field, whether they be pilots or otherwise, are seeing things, they're seeing things, whatever those things are, but whenever they see them, they, there's nothing else that can confirm it, right? There's no, there's no other data. There's no other data that can confirm what they saw. N no one's going to want to touch that with a 10-foot pole, right? Because there's, no, there's nothing. There's nothing to support it at all, you know? But as soon as that spy one radar came out, that was really the first time that they started seeing these certain certain types of objects. And so they had basically, you know, developed into a frequency range or developed a method of detection that they were now picking up these objects where they were not picking them up before. So this became the very first time that now when a pilot says, I saw something, now I have, they have actual some real confirmation that, that, they, that she actually did see something. Not what it is, but that whatever they, he or she thought they saw, there was something physically there. Now that you have those two things, now that's something I can actually do something with, right? I can actually take that up the chain of command. I can actually defend that. I, I may actually want to defend that on behalf of someone who reports to me because that's something I can actually sink my teeth into without any sort of data. And so part of me is really wondering if it really just was the spy one radar that became the catalyst for why now. Bob, what's your thoughts? So I'm going to say as much as I can say because I worked on the spy sure, one sure. radar in the last four years and made – made uh, artificial intelligence upgrades to the way the system works. So I'm just going to say, but back when Kevin Day was out on the Nimitz, there was a major upgrade to the Spy-1 radar, and he was using it to see these things all the way up to 80,000 feet and then vectored Fravor to an actual object with Alex Dietz and then later Chad Udwood to, to the same object, and Chad got the FLIR video. All of these things together 
these multi-messenger sensors married together is what Chris Mellon has been raising hell about in the blog on TTSA, which is now captured in the language in the NDAA. That's what all of this stuff is about, exactly what John's talking about. Because if, stuff, if I see something and I'm an eyewitness, nobody's going to believe me. But if I see something and I'm an eyewitness and I have a video and I have an audio and I have a gravitational accelerometer and a magnetometer and a radar mm -hmm. and a so forth, then they can shut the F, mm -hmm. F up because I have data that they cannot refute. Yep. Yep, and the thing was is that Kevin Day has said point blank that the the, the vehicles that were on site that day that had not been upgraded, they did not see the objects. Right. It was only the ships, the only the vehicles that had been upgraded to that latest version that actually started seeing. The, so there was an actual functional difference, an actual an increase in functional capabilities that came with that upgrade that allowed them to see something that they were not seeing before. And that's a big, and I'm not, I'm not even saying they did it on purpose. I mean, I'm sure the, the whatever feature was, was done on purpose. But the fact that that feature then opened them up to see these objects, I, I would be shocked to find out if that was intentional. I, my guess is that was completely bumbled into. But it doesn't change the fact that now they have, you know, confirming evidence to something. And don't get me wrong. Anyone who has a pilot that says they saw something, it kills them to not, not be able to back them up. Right, you don't want you don't want to have to tell your pilot to go to go sh shove it and 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 keep keep the mouth shut, right? You want to back up your people, but without that data, what do you do? You can't. So once you have that data, whole thing changes. It's also the reason they fly people out to ship and grab the disc and take them and hide them. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah, oh yeah, because they they were probably quite surprised. I'm sure they were quite surprised that anyone started seeing anything at all. Right. I mean, you know, it, it's um, I mean, I'm sure someone was, you know, um, someone had had hypothesized that that might happen. So I'm, I wouldn't say it was a total shock. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's just to me, to me, like it, it just I, I really think that there was this this practical, mundane, boring aspect of it that essentially without that, without that corroborating data point, without that, that that third party data point, everything that anyone was saying was just hearsay. And you had decades of it and everyone got sick of it. But what could you do? And then you suddenly this radar comes out and you're like, aha, now I got them. Right. To me, it's like a big change. Well, look, it's that evidence and other evidence that people looked at in the intelligence committees and the armed service committees all the way up to the National Security Council. And they said, Man, this looks like something straight out of science fiction, which is why we had the NDA, NDAA amendment today. These right, sensors, right. these sensors made the day. Right, right, and exactly, and that's the that's the other thing that, that we won't even really get in purview to for years is that there there was in every single sensor group there there might have been data that pertains to this that just wasn't being used or it wasn't being addressed or it was being dropped or or whatever right it just wasn't being addressed properly and once one data set recognizes it as something real now you get to go back and pour through all and now you get to start reassigning and now you can still start i mean oh it it, it opens up to such deep levels it's it's amazing what you can find out once you start making those connections what a run what a run tonight Three hours of straight UFO talk on Science Bob and Friends here on Spaced Out Radio. Science Bob, Dr. Bob McGuire, much love. And I know this is our last time we'll talk to you until uh, after Christmas and probably into the new year on, on air. I'm sure you have a few words for our audience with about 40 seconds left. I do. Thanks for everyone for being here and uh, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Be safe. Be, be, be well. Take care and safe travels. Awesome. Awesome. Nicole Sackett, much love to you. And I know we'll probably sneak you on again every now and again. No. Whether maybe you not. like it or not. Yeah, probably. You know, if John decides to have another birthday party, we may have to bring you on yeah, again, you Nicole. You, you know. There you go. You yeah. Always on standby, just for yeah. you. I you know. I, actually, you know, honestly, you're pulling really good numbers. So it's like, you know, we should probably bring you in more often. Well, you know, <laughs> she's got the brains. I got the looks. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. 
All right, John Hudson, another stellar unbiased UFO report. Thank you very much.